Hey guys, how's it going? Elliot here again. In today's video, we're gonna be having a look at a couple of clone or knockoff consoles. Um, these specifically are both of um, Game Boys. Without any further ado, let's crack straight into the boxes. So the first one we're gonna have a look at is the GB Boy Color, and it's obviously a knockoff or ripoff of the uh, Game Boy Color here by Nintendo. This is a official box, and this is the official console. This is the uh, Japanese one, but that doesn't massively matter. Um, what the main thing I wanted to show you was is the uh, boxes are basically identical in terms of size. Um, there's very limited stuff actually on this box. If you flip this around, you can see there's quite a lot of detail. On the back of this one, there's really not that much at all. Um, as you can see, it's relatively similar. They've got the screenshots of the Game Boy here. Uh, flip it onto the side, on the front, the bottom, and the top. It's a little bit similar. Um, what you will notice is the spelling of color is different. This is the European or English way of spelling it, and this is the uh, American color with a U. Uh, we've got 56 colors is mixed to 32,000 colors. The new style, construction, and economy power technology supports multi person games, more colors for choice. Um, new front light screen, much more better. <laughs> and if that doesn't persuade you, then I don't know what does. Maybe it's the uh, fact that it's advertised and there's 188 in one, because that's pretty fantastic, as we already know. Um, on the side, we've got yellow, green, or blue. And then this one, crystal purple, crystal green, or crystal blue. This one is obviously the one we have. You can tell by the fact that there's blood on the uh, circle there. So without any further ado, I guess we can just crack into it. So we have some paperwork at the back here, possibly, there we go, I believe there's two bits of paperwork. We've got uh, Kong Feng Industrial Co Limited, nothing English on there that I can see, just showing us how to put the batteries in, uh, yeah, probably it, and then this one we have the... This looks like a warranty card or something. Who knows? Who cares? Answer, not any of you guys, I don't think. Uh, so let's have a look at the actual console then. So I'm sure many of you have seen these in, uh, in videos before, but this is the, uh, the first one that I managed to get my hands on. I think it's a really, really awesome console. Um, it is really well made, in my opinion, and it's really comfy to hold. Very much similar to using the actual Game Boy here from Nintendo, um, except obviously this one's got backlight. There are a few differences, the main one being the fact that the uh, screen is not the same aspect ratio. However, for the fact that you have an actual proper backlight here, not even a front light is, uh, is really, 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 really worth it. Um, I believe somewhere in, on here it actually says, yeah, new front light technology, but it's, it is actually 100% backlit and it is really, really amazing. So without any further ado, let's pop some batteries in. If, uh, if you guys want to watch me maybe take this apart, we can have a look at what's inside, then uh, let me know in the comments. Um, so quickly before we turn it on, we can have a look at the uh, button layout. We've got the D-pad, A and B, speaker, start and select. Incidentally, this one is much more superior to this. You've got much bigger buttons here, whereas this one's kind of rubbery and really not that great. It's kind of undefinite whether or not you're actually pressing it or not. On the back, we've got the battery covers, we've got the sticker, nothing really English on here. This one's kind of got a curve, and this one's just straight. Uh, you can see on the top, we've got the IR port. I don't actually know if that works. Um, on the side, we've got our um, external, which to me looks to be different. Maybe this is the one for the SP. Let's have a look. Yep, it is. Uh, we've got our volume. On this side, we've got our power switches, and that's pretty much it. So let's put this one aside. This is what we care about. Um, so when you turn it on without a game in it, it boots up this screen here, uh, where you can kind of select the different games. Works absolutely fine. Um, I mean, if, if you haven't got any games to... Uh, to play then yeah it works absolutely fine however take a game like the Zelda DX one for example whack it in there boot it up and it works absolutely fine now I did mention before that that screen ratio is a little bit different but in my opinion it's it's really not like that noticeable after you've played for a little while plus also the fact that um, the screens backlit oh you can see we've got a bit of a graphical glitch there 
Plus, as I said, the screen's backlit, so it's um, you're, you're kind of losing that square aspect ratio, but you're, you're picking up a backlight, which in my opinion, I think is really, really worth it. Let's go for the old blow technique there, see if we can get that to work. One thing I will mention, which is quite weird, when you move off screen, for example on Zelda, the whole screen kind of, like, like motion blur, I don't really know how to describe it, but again, as I said, it's these things are literally like 20 quid, they're really, really cheap, and what you get for them is just absolutely fantastic. Sometimes it can be a little bit crammy having like a, a 101 in your hands or something, so um, having, having an actual nice big thing to hold, I really do think uh, is worth the fact that the screen's a little bit a little bit messed up in terms of the aspect ratio. Anyway, moving on to the next console then. This one was a little bit harder to find. I got this uh, off of a mate of mine in the UK. Uh, this is a clone Game Boy Advance SP. Lo using the word clone lightly because it doesn't actually function exactly the same. Uh, but let's have a look then. We've got a manual. It's probably going to have terrible English. Uh, what's, what have we got on here? Um, Thank you for purchasing the Game Boy Advance SP. Before you play, before play it, please carefully read the instruction manual and use your Game Boy Advance SP according to the instructions. If a small child will be playing the Game Boy Advance SP, or parent or guardian should carefully read this section and explain the contents to the child. Store the instruction manual and the warranty carefully to assure that it will be available for future reference. So not too bad there on the English translation front. Apparently you can plug it into the, uh, the TV, I don't have that cable. Uh, so inside the box then, we'll have a quick look around the box actually, we've got the official Nintendo, um, original Nintendo seal of quality, obviously this is 100% real. We've got brighter backlit screen, it's advertising it can save, we've got some fake live screenshots all over it, 3D world, don't know why it says that. Picture of Mario Nitro Kart, oh Crash Bandicoot Nitro Kart, sorry, uh, nothing on the bottom. More lies on the top, colour blue, that's pretty much it then. So let's have a look. Uh, we've got the unit, we've got the cable for charging, and we've got a UK adapter. Cable's going to be horrible. It's that weird uh, kind of old USB, micro USB. Um, I don't know if, if it actually works. Oh, there probably isn't even a uh, charging slot, slot for that. No, never mind. So that is the only way you can charge it. Um, so yeah, here's the device. From first glance, it looks quite similar. Um, you really wouldn't notice it's a fake unless you were really holding it, or if you were to click the micro-switched L and R buttons. Really, really horrible tactile feedback from that. It's it's like I I quite like how these ones are quite easy to press, but you definitely know you're pressing them. Whereas these are like a bit of a bit of a task to press them. Anyway, the plastic is abysmally cheap. This is a reshell here, and this looks a hundred thousand times better than uh, than that one there. Uh, this is a AGS one hundred one. I will be doing a video on this. the uh, The screen is actually is actually broken here on the side. I don't know if you can see that there, but um, but obviously for playing your normal um, original Game Boy games, it works absolutely fine. Or your Game Boy Color games, it doesn't make any difference at all. Um, but yeah, anyway, moving on from that. This is the unit. Uh, let's have a quick look around the side then. We've got a horrible power switch here. It's, I mean, it does the job, but it doesn't feel very nice by any means. Uh, we've got some lies on the back saying that it's actually a Game Boy. We've got some Nintendo patent patenting, which is also lies. Um, all pretty authentic though, looks pretty authentic. Uh, got a freaking whatever that is, quality seal thing, which obviously you would not see on a Nintendo product. Uh, it's not triring screws in there. Uh, the volume slider, I think that's on the other side, is the worst thing I've ever felt in my life. Literally, it's it's kind of hard to explain, but going up is really easy, and then going down, it's like really, really resistive. It's kind of horrible. Um, yeah, pretty much it for the outside then. you got your pins in there. Uh, so let's have a look at what you do when you turn it on. Mmm, pretty good. Let's listen to the original one quickly. Nice, and let's have a listen to this one again. Oh, yeah. Very nice. So, this, let's have a quick look then. So, you press this, and this is the reset button. I kind of regret doing that though. Can we skip past that? Probably not. Um, it's got a load of games on it. It's got some good ones, pretty much everything you'd really want on a game where you've got Pokemon, 
Got some Mario stuff. Let's have a look at Mario Super Mario Advance. Incidentally, the screenshots for the uh, menu are all lies. Don't know why they decided to do that. You may notice the screen looks quite terrible. It's also got a scratch on it, but the screen quality, the resolution on it is, is just really, really poor. The backlight's not actually that bright either. I mean, it is still backlit. Um, the exposure's up on this quite high, but um, the backlit's really nothing compared to uh, the one on this console here. I don't know if you can work, work that out there. You probably can. Sounds awful. Um, so yeah, other than other than all the games that are loaded on there, this is pretty much just a multi-cart in a Game Boy. The real question is, can it play original Game Boy Advance games? So let's have a look. So it slots in alright. Turn it on, and you've got a white screen. Now I don't know if this, this uh, specific one is defective. Um, you may notice down there that there's only metal pins on that side and on that side, which would kind of ind indicate to me that this is literally just being used to uh, short the, the Game Boy and then it automatically turns on. Um, it doesn't work with a Game Boy cartridge, Game Boy Advance, um, sorry, Game Boy Color or normal DMG cart. It literally doesn't work with anything. It only works with the uh, built-in games that are on the, uh, the Game Boy. Not entirely sure why. Maybe mine's defective, as I said, um, or it just doesn't work like that anyway, but... Yeah, I mean, it's still pretty cool to have. They're getting quite hard to pick up these days, so um, yeah, I'm quite happy to pick it up. That's pretty much it for this video. This has been um, some clone consoles I've been doing some uh, some collecting on, I guess. Um, I've got plenty more to be doing videos on, so stay tuned. I would really like to do the uh, Supervision video. If you watch to the end of this, then thank you so, so much. Have a lovely day, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.